the story again. Again and again and again and again. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Wandered in darkness, in darkness to say, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Okay, let's everybody stand all over the building. How many ever loved the Lord? All right, come on, get us a good song, Brother Jason. Top of 404, Heavenly Sunlight. 404. the Lord. I'm never glad you're walking in the sunlight of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Boy, God's good. Let's don't let the light be dim, but let's let the light be very bright. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. I have got a special request. Uplifted hand all over the building, if you will, please. Okay, let's pray. My Heavenly Father, thank you for the good day. Thank you for the good service this morning. Thank you for a good meal at dinner time. And, uh, Lord, the good rest this afternoon. Now we're back in the house of God again tonight. Lord, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, that you'd help us in a mighty way. Bless all of the singing tonight. May it be spirit-filled songs that glorify Christ. Then, Lord, I pray you'll bless the tithes and offerings tonight. I pray, Lord, you'll bless the preaching of the Word of God. Bless our fellowship together as we fellowship with you tonight. And we'll love you and thank you and praise you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. All God's people said amen. amen. You may be seated. Listen to the choir as they sing.
Amen. He's the dearest friend I've ever had. Say amen. God is good. Choir hadn't sung, Brother Mike, in a year, so I'm just working them while we're back at it. Praise God. We'll just work and let them sing a half a dozen songs. God is good, isn't he? Thank you for coming back for the service tonight. I'm looking forward. I've already enjoyed myself. Amen. Could have been somebody passed out over or something. I don't know, but I just had to say hallelujah one more time. Ain't God good to us? Everybody's standing all over the building. We're going to ask the ushers to come receive our tithes and offerings this morning. The Lord is good. I had several people tell me they enjoyed the service this morning. And I preached a whole lot of it on giving. God loves a cheerful giver, and you sure cannot outgive God, can you? Amen. That's exactly right. Cannot outgive the dear Lord. Brother Jamie, Darrell Doss, come on, on up here and help us, if you will. Receive the offering tonight. God is good. Ain't God good? Uh, you know, we had that funeral service here last Sunday afternoon. And uh, so the uh, the Colonial Funeral Home was took care of it, and Ronaldo was out in the vestibule, and brother brother Will Hopper, he used to be the manager over there, and now he's turned it. He's not the manager anymore, is he? But he's uh, he sits. He comes a lot in in a lot of funerals. He's eighty some years old. Here's what he said about Westside Baptist Church when he came in. He told Ronaldo, he said, "This church." is always clean every time we've had a funeral service over here he said it's always clean and real nice and you know who you know who gets the reward for that every one of you that helped clean the church i think it's one of the cleanest churches and i'm going to keep on seeing to it by the grace of god that it is a clean church amen cleanness is Cleanness is the will of God. I mean, this church doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to any member in this church. My name's not on anything in this church. It belongs to God. And he is leaving it up to us, Brother Mike, to keep his building as nice and clean as we possibly can. We didn't come to worship the building. I don't worship this building. I don't worship these Chandeliers. I don't worship these paddy pews. I don't worship this this uh, this uh, carpet on the floor. I worship the one that made it possible for we for us to have this building, and that's the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And He's the only one I've ever worshipped, only one I got a desire to worship, and the only one I'm going to ever worship by the grace of God. Dear Lord, thank you for the good songs of Zion. Now, bless the offering. And the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's remain standing. Another good song comes up. Bottom of 139 at Calvary. <clears throat> Here's a spinning vanity and pride. Caring not, my Lord was crucified. Knowing not, it was for me.
right, thank you, thank you for that wonderful song tonight. The Lord is good to us, isn't he? Thank you for coming, being with us in the service. Time to preach again. Ain't God good? Wednesday night, the Lord willing, we'll have service at 7 o'clock. How many of you have never heard Brother Bill Vaughn preach? Would you raise your hand if you've never heard, never heard him preach? Raise your hand. Okay, one, two, three, four. He passes Highland Baptist Church down in Sanford, North, North Pine, what's his name? Vast North Carolina. And he has a jubilee every year, and I've preached, uh, I think, one or two revival meetings for him. And every time I go to his camp meeting, I preach in his camp meeting. But he's going to be with us this coming Wednesday night. He's like me. He don't leave his church much on Wednesday night or Sunday. But he said, I'll, I'll be glad to come. i got a man I can uh, get to fill in for me on Wednesday night, and I want, I want to come up and preach for him. Well, I said, we want you to. He is a good fireball preacher, so you'll want, you want to hear Brother Bill preach. He's the one, how long has it, uh, ago has it been since his two granddaughters got killed in a car wreck? How long has that been? About three years ago? Two years next month. But that man is still going, and the last time I heard him preach, we preached together. We've been preaching together in a revival meeting in uh, Danville, Virginia for the last three or four years, but we weren't able to do it last year because of the coronavirus. And uh, pray for that preacher, too. He's not doing good. He's getting up in age, and he's having a lot of physical problems, and so we need to pray for Brother uh, Donald Mahan, and pray that God would touch him and heal his body. Well, they said the camera went off this went out this morning about 30 minutes after we got started. Was it after we got started preaching or when the whole thing got started? Do you have an idea? 11.38. I hadn't preached much at 11.38. Well, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to talk to the man on the Internet tomorrow and find out what the problem is, and I think it's not the camera, I think it's the internet having a lot of problems with that, so God is good. Well, are you ready for some preaching tonight? Amen. By the way, you that's listening by the way of live stream and YouTube, thank you for listening, and uh, I've got a lot of folk that listen to it, and we appreciate it. Hoping to be a blessing to you. God is good. Wave your Bible just a little bit. Waving all over the building. All over the building. Amen. Thank God for your Bible. Hallelujah. I want you to turn. I haven't preached this message in a long time. But and it made no difference if I preached it last week. If God said preach it tonight, then I'll preach it tonight. Say amen. In the book of Mark, chapter number five. The book of Mark, chapter number five. I'm going to read probably about 20 verses. Now, get your pencil and paper. If you want to write down a few notes, that's okay. If you don't, pay attention. And uh, get something from this, uh, these 20 verses tonight. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, and the Bible says, unto the country of the Gadarians. And when it was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains because the Bible said that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces and the Bible says neither could any man tame him. But he's getting ready to be tamed by the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm in, sound like I'm in a barrel back here. Do something about that barrel, get the monkey out of it or something. The Bible said, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshiped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, 
What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the Most High? I adjure thee by God uh, that thou torment me not. And he said unto them, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was uh, there, uh, now there was there a great, I mean, they, there was there nigh under the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And the Bible says, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. Amen. When Jesus says leave, they leave. And the Bible says, And the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Man. And the Bible said in verse 14, And they that had fed the swine fled and told it in the city and the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. They heard about that. Amen. They heard about that. And the Bible says, And they came uh, to Jesus and see him, watch this now, and see him that was possessed, that's past tense, that was possessed with the devil. And here's three things they saw and had the legion, number one, sitting, and number two, and clothed, and number three, in his right mind, and they were afraid. Now only Jesus could do something like that. And the Bible says, and they say unto, and uh, they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And the Bible said, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Hallelujah. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee, hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. Boy, that's the kind of compassion we need, isn't it? And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Now, dear Father, I know you will bless the word of God. Help me as I preach it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I want to preach on the subject tonight entitled The Maniac of Gadara. The Maniac of Gadara. And there's a few things I want you to notice about this man, this person. Notice, my friend, first of all, his dwelling place. And of course, the word dwelling means his residence. It means his house. That tells us where he was living. How would you like for somebody to come up to you and say, where is your residence at? Where is your house at? And you would have to say, over in the cemetery. No, you, do, you don't mean in, in the tombs, uh, in the cemetery. You probably mean on the outside of the cemetery. Or you, you just live close to the cemetery. He said, no, I live in the cemetery. Now, I wouldn't want to live there, would you? I mean, I just would not want to live there. But you know, the cemetery is a place where dead people are. Well, this man was alive physically, but he was dead spiritually. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins in Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Now, I want to tell you that before I got saved 
And before you got saved, we were dead spiritually in trespasses and in sins. Sure, we were alive when I got saved. I was 23 years old, and I did not have a pain in my body. Nothing was wrong with me. I mean, I had no pain, no broken bones, no, no sickness at all. I was alive spiritually, but I was dead spir uh, spiritually. I was alive physically, but I was dead spiritually. And when you got saved, before you got saved, you were dead physically, but um, you were dead spiritually. But when you got saved, you became alive spiritually. Did I get all that straightened out? Are you sure I got it straightened out? If not, I'll repeat it again. Now, I want to praise God where I live. I want to praise God for a nice home. I want to praise God that it's warm. I want to praise God that it's cold. I want to praise God that it's a place of safety. It's a place, my friend, where I can protect myself and my family. I want to praise the Lord for my dwelling. But then we find the next thing about this man that he was, uh, we find uh, his dress what kind of, when I say dress, I'm thinking about, I'm talking about his clothing. What kind of clothing did he have on? Nothing. The Bible says he was naked. The Bible says he wear no clothes. And when you don't wear clothes, then you are naked. And matter of fact, if you turn over in the book of Luke chapter number 8 and verse number 27, you'll find, you'll find the same story. And the Bible said this, the demon is cast out, cast out here as well. And verse number 27, the Bible says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time and wear no clothes. That's what the Bible says. And wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. Well, the Bible makes reference over to the book of Genesis, chapter number 3 and verse number 7. And I wonder what, ha what that has to say. Well, let's turn over there in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3 and in the verse number 7. And notice what the Bible says concerning Adam and concerning Eve. Now, listen to it, young folk. Listen real carefully. The Bible said you find the temptation here of Eve and the fall of Eve. You'll find that Adam and Eve have failed God by disobedience in this chapter. And the Bible says in the verse number 6, I'm going to read 6 uh, them, uh, through verse number 7 or 8, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, you better watch that that is pleasant to the eyes. They will get you in trouble. And a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They were naked. They were not ashamed of their nakedness before they sinned. But after they sinned, they were ashamed of their nakedness. You, are you with me? And the Bible says... And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons. Well, you may try to cover up your sin, but you don't cover it up from God. He sees it anyway. And then the Bible said, The seeking God we find here, and the Sabbath is broken, and the new work began. In verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They knew trouble was on the way. They knew that. But what they didn't know, help was also on the way. And the Bible says, And Adam and uh, his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You can't run from God because it makes no difference where you go. He knows where you are. Makes no difference where you hide. He now. 
Now, God knew where they were, but God wanted them to admit where they were. And God wanted them to know that he knew where they were. And so they began to make excuses why they did disobey God. And he said, And uh, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Brother Jimmy, they weren't afraid of God before they sinned. And sin will cause you to be afraid of your companion, of your children, of your parents. It will cause you to be afraid of God, of the Holy Ghost, of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will cause you to be afraid of the preacher, and you'll try to hide, but there's no hiding place. But I know one you can run to, and that's the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hath thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to me, gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Yes, sir. She got him in trouble. She got in trouble. She got him in trouble, and then they blamed it on the devil. You can't blame everything on the devil, although he's an instigator of sin, and he's a liar and the father of it. And the Bible said in verse number 13, And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And it goes right on down. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise thy heel. And so we find this man wear no clothes. This man was, was living in the tombs, and he wear no clothes. He was a naked man. Now, there's something wrong with the man that wants to live in the tombs. And there's something wrong with the man that wants to go around naked. Well, there's something wrong with a man that wants to go around half naked. There's something wrong with a woman that wants to go around half naked. And I'm going to tell you, when these ladies, may I say women, when these women put on their bikinis and lay around out in the sun, they're over half naked. There's something wrong with them. When they go down to the beaches in the summertime, and they flock there with thousands of people, and all they have on is a little old bikini, the most of them, say amen, thousands of them run around with bikinis on, 99.9% naked. That is an abomination in the sight of God. And the men wear their little short swimming trunks, that's so tight, they look like they've been poured in them, and all that's all they got on. That is a shame and a disgrace to God Almighty. I want to say that again. To dress like that in the public is a disgrace to God Almighty. It's never been right, and it never, ever will be right. Amen. And I tell you, Women that wear many dresses and many skirts will never get God's stamp of approval on them. Could I hear you say amen? This Bible tells me how I'm supposed to dress as a Christian. Now, don't cut the TV off. Most of them, I'm telling people to cut them off and throw them out the door. But if you got it on or whatever, if you got a... Uh, if you got a, uh, what is it, a cell phone, you're listening to it or whatever you are, I, I want you to keep it on just for a moment. Amen. And I want to show what the Bible says about you young ladies and young men, how we're supposed to dress to please God. Say amen. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, you don't hear much preaching 
on how Christian people are supposed to dress behind the pulpit. Well, it's in the Bible. And if it's in the Bible, it's right. Jesus either tells us right or it tells us that it's wrong. You should dress like a lady and I should dress like a man. I am a man. Hey, man. I look like a man. I dress like a man. I smell like a man. Say amen. And you ought not be ashamed. God help this crowd when some little boy comes up to mama and says, Mama, I think God made a mistake. I think God wants me to be a little girl. Shut your mouth. If God wants you to be a little girl, you would be a little girl. And these little and some of these men that, men that come up and say, I just tell you what, I think God made a mistake. I think God wants me to be a woman. Hush. God didn't mean for you to be a woman. If God meant for you to be a woman, he'd have made you a woman. Be what you are and don't try to be something that you're not. God made Adam and God made Eve. God made the first man and God made the first woman. Do you have to go to school to learn that? No, you don't have to go to school to learn that. You see, when you go to a, a public restroom, and on the door, they identify whose restroom it is. And on the door, if it's the ladies' restroom, they'll have the, a, a woman, a picture there, a drawing with a skirt on. And sometimes that's a mini skirt. And then if it's, a, if it's the men's restroom, they'll have a man there with a pair of pants on. Amen. Could I hear you say amen? Women are, women are supposed to wear dresses and skirts, and men are supposed to wear, my friend, pants. Hallelujah. Now, some of y'all, some of y'all don't like that, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I won't, I won't lose, lose one bit of sleep tonight worrying about that because that's in the Bible and the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me, and I'll stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Uh oh, there went off some. There went off some of the uh, Facebooks. No, I, I'm not on Facebook. But anyway, let's get down here and look at First Timothy chapter two and verse number eight. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up dirty hands. That ain't in your Bible. It's not in mine either. He said, lifting up holy hands. Will God give you holy hands when you got saved? God gave us holy bodies, Brother J.D., when we got saved. That's why Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, verse number 2. Now, is that in your Bible? God is not going to change his Bible. You say, well, my Bible don't say that. Well, you've got the wrong Bible. You don't have a Bible. You've got a book. Amen. Amen. Come on, help me out, men. You don't have no chicken feathers. The Bible said, I will therefore that men everywhere lifting up holy hands with, uh, without wrath, wrath or doubting. So likewise, so in like manner that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or apparels or costly array, but that which becometh professing godliness with good works. So the Bible tells us that women are to supposed to dress godly, amen, that's supposed to walk godly, Hallelujah. And the Bible said, Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the men and to be in silence. And so you can take that verse of Scripture. God does not call women to preach the Word of God. Now that's not belittling women folk. Praise the Lord for godly women. I mean, praise God for godly women and women that love the Lord that's in our church and are a blessing to this church and any other church that are women that are pleasing in the sight of God and love the Lord. 
I had a man tell me one time years ago, he's in heaven now to live right over here, right over here in one of these avenues. And he said, Brother Paul, I went to preaching last night and I heard a good preacher. I said, who was it? And he called it, it was Sister So-and-So. And I said, he said, man, she moves around preaching like you do. I said, is that right? I said, she may move around, but she ain't no preacher. She may think that she is a preacher, and she may say that she's been called to preach, but she needs to go over in 1 Timothy chapter number 3 and look at the qualifications of elders and of deacons. The Bible said this is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, not a half a dozen, but one. If a preacher could have more than one wife, if he could have two wives, then he could have a half a dozen. What would difference? Am I right? But the Bible said here, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, ver, uh, vigilant, the Bible says, and, and sober I, I, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having the children in subjection with all gravity. Now, that's what the Bible says. You're not going to change the Bible. It doesn't make any difference what your friend may say, what your family member may say. It doesn't make any difference. That is the Word of God. Now, you can believe it or not believe it, but if you don't believe it, then you're headed for trouble down the road. Say amen, Brother Paul. Okay, Brother Paul, amen. Amen. Oh, yes. And the word modest there means orderly. Orderly is what that means. It means decorous. It means of good behavior. That's what it's talking about. Could I hear you say amen? Now look, if you will, please. Something is wrong with women that want to wear these mini dresses and these low-cut dresses because they know that men are going to look at them and men are going to lust after them. And you know that's not right. You're headed for trouble when you, de when you dress in a worldly manner. And you dress, my friend, in the thing. Now, you can understand lost people want to do something like that. But I'm not talking to lost people right now. I'm talking to saved people. When we got saved, our body no longer belonged to us. And it belongs to the Lord. And the Bible said, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own, for you're bought with a prize, therefore glorify your body. And he says, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Are you listening to me? We're living in a day and time now when women lust after other women. We're living in a day and time when men lust after other men. That, that's an abomination in the sight of God. You can call it what you want to. I'm preaching the word of God as it is to men and women, boys and girls as they are, and I don't care what you call it, the Bible calls it an abomination. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And so we're not supposed to dress, my friend, in such a way that would cause men and uh, women to lust after one another. Now, here's what the Bible says. Uh-oh, I think I just got a few more cutoffs. That's okay. It means you might, you might be guilty over something. Look, sounds to me like, sounds to me like I'm not aiming for your toes, and I'm not aiming for your toes. I'm aiming for your heart. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and verse number 27, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery and committing adultery is still a sin in the sight of God and but I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman 
to lust after her committeth adultery with her already in his heart. Is that what the Bible says? Is that not what messed David's life up when he looked at Bathsheba and she was taking the bath and he looked and he looked too long and he began to lust and he called for her and committed a terrible sin that was against God. Sin's always been against God. Sin always will be against God. Now, if you're listening tonight and you believe what I'm saying, you ought to say amen. amen. I can't hear you, but you ought to say it anyway. And if you do say amen, that's fine. And if you don't, that's all right. That's perfectly fine. You can say, oh, me if you want to. You can cut me off if you want to. But I'm not stopping until I get through. Amen. Say Amen. God is so good. This man was in bad shape. I mean, he, he had a problem. And he had a problem with where he lived at. He had a problem with the, the way that he dressed himself. It does make a difference. Hey, hey, wait a minute. It does make a difference. I remember before I got saved, I used to wear those Bermuda shorts. <laughs> These looked like doorknobs. <laughs> Are oh, you listening to me? That's what Brother Mays Jackson used to say. But I, I wore Bermuda shorts for a while after I got saved. And I, was, I was ashamed of myself. Hey, Amen. To wear them things just about before I ever did get saved. We used to go swimming in a swimming hole down in the creek, my friend, and, and, uh, and dammed up us a hole of water down there. And it was close to a bridge. And it wasn't anybody but just me and my brothers. No houses for two or three miles around. But my friend, every time, I mean, we had on, the, we had on our swimming trunks. What were they? A pair of cut-off overalls, say men, or blue jeans. You remember that, Brother Thomas? But every time a car would come by, but we hear a car coming down that dirt road, we would squat down, and you couldn't see nothing but our head, or we would take off running to get on the bridge. We didn't want nobody to see us naked, half naked. Not like that anymore. Then they, now they stand, up in the, they stand up on the bridge and say, look at me. God help us. Are you listening to me? He was a man that had his dwelling place in the tombs. There's something wrong with him. And he was running around naked, didn't have no clothes on. I know a man, you would know him if I tell you, I ain't calling his name. I'm not calling his name because you would know him. And he's not any kin to anybody in this building either. So, smile. He went in one, <laughs> he went in one of the restaurants in this town, drunk, that's what liquor would do for you, and beer and wine, went in one of these restaurants in Medan, sat down on a stool and wanted a hamburger. Didn't have a stitch of clothes on. You know what a stitch is, don't you? Well, he got his hamburger. He got, he got to jail before he ever got his hamburger. You say that right now. Now, I'm telling you what he told me, and I'm telling you what a good friend of mine and a good friend of yours told you. That's what that sour liquor will do. The Bible said in Ephesians 5, verse 18, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. But that man got saved. That man saved, that man's in church right now, he wouldn't think about doing something like that. When you got that alcohol in you, buddy, I'm telling you, you're in bad shape. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now I'm right. Now you know I'm right. Thank you. You know I'm right. But then why would a man do that? Why would a man live like that? Why would a man dress like that? Well, the Bible tells us why, Brother Alton. He had some demons of hell in him. He had some demons of hell and the devil was in him. He had unclean spirits. And the Bible said in verse number 2, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Unclean spirit will cause you to do unclean things. It will cause you to say unclean things. It will cause you, it will cause you to go to unclean places. It will cause you to look at unclean things. Am I preaching, Brother Jimmy? Was I preaching like this 45 years ago when I came? And I'm still preaching it because the Bible hasn't changed. Amen. Well, and notice what the Bible says. 
And, but when he saw Jesus fall off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou tem- t- uh, torment me not. And he said unto them, Come out of this, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Boy, the unclean spirits had to obey God. How come we that have the Holy Spirit of God in us don't want to obey God? The unclean spirits obey obeyed God. How come us with the right spirit? Of course, I'm not saying we're demon possessed. No, no, no. A saved man can't be demon possessed. I say that again. You cannot be demon possessed when you are saved because you're sealed until the day of redemption. But we're disobedient to God in our spirit a lot of times. And guess what they said here? And, And he besought them much that he would send them away out of the country. Now there was... They're nigh, nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And they ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were 2,000 and they were choked in the sea. I got a call the other day from this person a couple of weeks ago, and they said, they were talking about this man. And they said, I believe I know what's wrong with that man. I believe that man's got the devil in him. And he said, you know, Brother Paul, that scripture over in the Bible where it says when Jesus, when Jesus got, the, got them, them devils out of that man and, and they run over and got in them pigs and run down and choked. He called them pigs. That's what it was. <laughs> and he said, I believe, I believe some of them demons got in that man. Oh, you listen? Brother Sammy Adams said, you don't hardly, have you ever seen a dog? You ever seen a mad dog? Raise your hand if you've ever seen a mad dog. I've seen some mad men before and women too. Worst thing I've seen in my life was a mad woman. Worst thing you'll ever see in your life is a mad, wo- is a mad woman. I mean, it's bad enough to see a mad man. If you let a, you let a woman get mad at you, you're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> you better have on Goliath's armor's on thing I'd say for you. Are you listening? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Oh, my. Brother Adam said, you don't see me mad dogs anymore. He said, them mad dogs got demons in them. They got devils in them. They tuck their tail between the legs and take off and they'll bite you, boy, and do you harm. He said, the reason why is because there's so many people out there now that's living in sin, and they're full of the devil. The demons of hell is in them. Are you listening to me? So we find... His dwelling, we find his dress, we find the demons, and then we find, boy, you're going to like this, and Brother Alton, you'll have to shout on this one. I think a whole church may shout if I tell you what that nation is. We find he has been delivered. Amen. Hey, I'm going to tell you I've been delivered. And if you're saved, you've been delivered, praise God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. I've been delivered. If you're saved, you've been delivered. Amen. It was by Jesus Christ, brother J.D. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 13, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. Hallelujah. And they that, the Bible says, and they that uh, uh, fed the swine uh, fled and told it in the city and in the country, They went out to see what it was that was done. (laughs) Amen. God performed another miracle. Hallelujah. 
If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness in 1 John 1 and verse number 9. Hey, we were all corrupt. We were all corrupt. We were all dead in trespasses and in sins, but we've been delivered. Hallelujah. There's got some more scripture I want to give you. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 9 through verse number 11. Watch this now. The body is, the body is now holy and, uh, because it's been washed and it's been justified. Look at me. It's been washed. The body's been washed. The body's been justified, made as though we had never sinned. He took all of our sins and washed them away in the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. I like what you says. In first night, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. <laughs> He said, you used to be like that, but you ain't like that no more. He didn't say all of them was like that. He said, part of you were like that. Some of you were like that. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Boy, I'm glad I've been delivered. Aren't you glad you've been delivered? I'm not trying to bring up old trash and old junk, but aren't you glad you're not what you used to be? Aren't you glad you're not what you're going to be? And it's all because you came to Jesus and repented and called on the Lord, and the Lord saved you. Ain't it good to be saved? Boy, I tell you, I was tired yesterday. After spending about four hours at the park, and all I did was eat and, and, and stood up and talked all the time, most of the time, but I was so, I was so tired and I got home. But I'm going to tell you, I slept, I, had to, I slept in my recliner. I said, ain't no use trying to go to bed. I mean, I, I was just all fired up and just, you know, and I, and I think I, I drank a half a Pepsi, and I think I know it had caffeine in it, and I was just wide awake. But I slept in my recliner until about 5.30, and I got up, and I went to bed and slept another hour and got up again. I got up feeling fine. I was tired when I went home today after preaching this morning. But after a good meal my wife had fixed for me, and I rested about two hours, I'm feeling fine. Oh, yes, I'm feeling real good. Real good like a preacher wants to. <laughs> but something else happened to it. Praise God. We find his dwelling place. We find his dress. We find the demons. We find the deliverer. And then we find there was a great big difference in him. Oh, what a difference since Jesus passed by. Three things, Brother, brother um, uh, Jason. Three things, don't you notice, in verse number 15. The Bible says... And they came to Jesus, or they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, amen, that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, he was sitting. Where was he sitting at? He was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and he was clothed. Now, ain't that a big difference? There's a lot of difference in nakedness and clothing. There's a lot of difference being dirty and being cleansed. And so he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was clothed, amen, and in his right mind, praise God. I tell you, one of the devil works on us that, and that's in our mind and the idle mind. I've been told it's nothing but a place where the devil works and tries to get our mind off of living right and doing right. Say amen. amen. Let me give you another verse of Scripture. I'm not trying to overkill because some of you are not dead yet. <laughs> Say amen. 2 Timothy 1, verse number 7. For God hath not given us 
The spirit of fear, well, what kind has he given us then? Has he given to us? But of power and of love and of a sound mind. When that man got in his sound mind, he had a, I mean, when that man got saved and my friend and got clothed and sitting at the feet of Jesus, his mind was right. Isaiah 26, 3, Isaiah said, Brother Mike, thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because she trusteth in thee. Hallelujah. Most television programs, they tell me, they tell me that most television programs are designed to blow your mind, and they tell me that all of this rap, I call it rap rotten music, is designed to blow your mind and all of this dope and alcohol and drugs and all of this stuff is, my friend, designed to blow your mind and all this does is get your mind on flesh that will destroy your body and destroy your soul. Say amen. So there's the difference, isn't it? I want to quote this verse of Scripture again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, there's something else he had, and I'm going to let you go. What was it? His desire changed, Brother Chuck. His desire changed. And 1 Peter 2 and verse number 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Babies don't desire hamburgers. They don't desire T-bone steaks. They don't desire anything but milk. Just give me some milk. Give me some milk. And then as they grow, they begin to eat the hamburgers and the hot dogs and everything else in the house. (laughs) Your grocery bill goes up. Don't you thank God for it? What was his desire? Well, the Bible says in uh, verse uh, number uh, verse number uh, 17, and they began to pray him to, de- to depart out of the, the coast, their coast. And when it was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. That means desire. He had a desire to be with Jesus. He wanted to walk with Jesus. It was Jesus that set him free. And he wanted to follow Jesus. He wanted to get on the ship and go with Jesus. I want to go with you. Nobody's ever treated me like you've treated me. Nobody's ever helped me like you've helped me. Nobody's ever loved me like you love me. I want to go with you. I wanted to go with Jesus when they got saved. And I still want to go with him. I want to go with him. I want to walk with him. I want to talk with him. I want to worship him. I'm going to see him one of these days. Do you want to go with Jesus? So here's what Jesus said. How be it Jesus suffered him not? Now, wait a minute. I thought you said when you got saved, you're supposed to follow Jesus. Well, he is following Jesus. Jesus is going in the, on the ship. He's in the ship, and he's getting ready to... to uh, take a ride on that ship, and this man wants you to get on the ship and go with him. Jesus said, no, I want you to go to your friend's house. I want you to go. See, and he goes, so he, obedience is following Jesus. Am I right, Brother Chuck? Obedience is following Jesus. Hey, hey, mom and dad, your children are following you. And I'm going to tell you, we need to be leading our children in the right direction. Look what it said. Je- How about Jesus suffered him not, but saith to them, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. And the Bible says that he departed. That means he said, Yes, Lord, I will go to my friends. I will do what you tell me to do. I will tell you something. I really miss living in Pilot Mountain. Every time I go through town, I say, praise God, this is my hometown. 
I enjoyed living a mile and a half from Pilot Mountain. And I was born and raised five miles from, from Pilot Mountain and lived there all of my life, that close. And I still love to go up there. I haven't stopped in there in a long time. I do go once in a while to a car show that they have up there. And, and one reason why I go to that car show is to see cars. Was well, that hard? But the main reason I go, I know I'm going to see two of my brothers, and I know I'm going to see some of my first cousins, and I'm going to see some friends, and I'm going to be able to witness to them and give some gospel tracts to them and say amen. I don't go to many of them. Very seldom. But he went beyond the call of duty. He began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Some have never had a desire to follow Christ. Brother Jamie, I know people that tell me they're saved, but they have never, never, not one time have they ever had a desire to follow Jesus. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishes of men. Some have never had a desire to follow Jesus, our wonderful Lord. No desire for Sunday school. Some have never had a desire for Sunday school. They've never gone to Sunday school. Some have never had a desire for preaching on Sunday morning. Some have, some have never had a desire to preach on Sunday night. I mean, to go to preach. Some have never had a desire on Wednesday night to go to church. Some have never had a desire, my friend, to go to revival meetings. None. But thank God some have. And I want to praise the Lord for that. Are you listening to me? Makes you wonder about their salvation, don't it? Brother Jason, it makes you wonder, are they really saved? They don't have no desire for spiritual things. Are they really saved? Makes you wonder. You need to read 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 3. And John said we need to have fellowship one with another, with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Some at one time had a desire for things of God, but they have left it. They have left their first love. Not lost it, but left it. Left it. And if you're tonight and you've left your first love, you need to remember where you left your first love and you need to go back to it. Are you listening to me? Say amen. Some people continue in disobedience so much that they have until they lose their consciousness of their disobedience. My, my, my. Brother Alton, I was talking to my wife this morning. We was talking about it uh, coming down the road tonight or going home this morning. How many, how many little kids did y'all have in your class? Four this morning? And she said those little boys and girls act like they really did enjoy being back in Sunday school. Don't shipwreck. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, holding faith and a good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. He looked beyond my faults and saw my need. You got your guitar. Could you sing that song? Come on up here, brother, brother Josh. Here's a song that will bless your heart. This song is going to make you remember and think about where you were before you got saved. It's going to make you remember, because you won't never forget these. God has. But this song is going to make you realize where you were before you got saved. And God looked beyond our faults and saw our need. Brother Jason, he looked beyond my faults, your faults. And not only Brother J.D. did he look beyond our faults, he saw our faults but he looked beyond our faults. 
and he knew that we needed him. And now you can ask, somebody can accuse us to the Lord Jesus Christ or can accuse us to God Almighty and God's going to look over at the Lord Jesus Christ and he's going to say, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. I don't remember them. I mean, they're gone. I don't remember them. Aren't you glad for that? Me, they're gone. Praise God, they're gone. Come on, I'll get you a mic for you. I'll help you out. You listen to this song tonight. It's going to be our invitation song now. You adjust it anywhere you want it, brother. All right. Now, this is going to be the invitation tonight. I want you to stand while he sings this song. Now, if you, if you need to come to this altar tonight, friend, young girls, be careful. All I can say to you, you better be careful. Don't make no hasty decisions out of God's will. Don't do it. You young boys and girls that's graduating, matter of fact, we got a couple of Bibles we're going to give y'all, and I got something to tell you about our graduates in, in just a little while. We're going to, we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a get together for them. I think we're going to try to the last Sunday night in this month. And so, some of you have graduated from high school. We weren't able to do anything for you uh, because this past year. And some of you graduated from college, so we're going to do something for you. And we're going to have a, a time of fellowship with you over in the fellowship building. But now, if you need to come to this altar tonight, you listen to this song. If you're not saved, you need to come get saved. If you're out of the will of God, then you need to come you need to come tonight and ask God to put you back in his will. Listen to this song. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bond my liberty I don't know why he came to love me so he looked beyond my fault and saw my name I shall for
and saw my need. Thank you, brother. God bless you. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but when I got saved, when, when I walked down that aisle, I was ashamed of myself because I knew I'd sinned against God, all, all sins against God. I'd sinned against heaven, sinned against God, but boy, he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. It's been over 50 years ago.